Hello and welcome back. In 2017 we made two videos looking at the best cinematography prior to 1999. For this one, we're looking at the 10 best uses of cinematography and films of the 21st century. Number 10, Birdman. You don't get to come in here and pretend you can write, direct and act in your own propaganda piece without coming through me first. So break a leg. As the only cinematographer to win the Best Cinematography Oscar three times in a row, Emmanuel Lebesky has made his place in Oscar history, but it's also entirely deserving. Whatever you think of Birdman itself, Lebesky's achievement in making the film look like a single continuous take is incredible. And while this technique has been done before, there's nobody else quite like Chivo. Hey, that's good work, man. Get him out of here. How do you want me to do that? Number nine, Inception. Christopher Nolan has a knack for keeping the magic of his movies secret. As audiences witnessed Inception's mind-bending practical effects, cinematographer Wally Pfister's work became all the more impressive. The very specific movements and visuals needed to create these dreamscapes in practical environments required an enormous level of skill, and Pfister more than rose to the challenge. Number 8. Roma Alfonso Cuaron had originally planned on reteaming with his Oscar-winning gravity cinematographer Emmanuel Lebesky to shoot Roma. However, Lebesky was forced to depart the film due to other work. It was then that Cuaron stepped in, bringing his own vision to life in stunning detail. The cinematography in Roma is truly mesmerising, and Cuaron's camera placement and shot composition is extremely precise. Every decision made here was in service of story, and the results are stunning. Number 7, Children of Men. Reuniting Alfonso Cuaron and Emmanuel Lebesky, Children of Men is a dystopian thriller set in 2027 Britain. Using lengthy single shot takes in which extremely complex action takes place, including one tour de force seven minute shot following Clive Owen through the streets and into a crowded apartment building during a raging firefight, Lubeski cinematography dazzles the audience with visual virtuosity. Number 6, 1917. With meticulous attention to detail, Roger Deakins utilised some astonishingly fluid cinematography to simulate the effect of a single shot, placing the audience right in the middle of the unfolding chaos. Deakins' incredible work promotes a real sense of epic scale as the camera moves breathlessly from one hellish environment to the next as the soldiers venture into uncharted terrain. There's no doubting the impact of his work here and it was more than worthy of its Oscar win. Number 5, The Revenant. The Revenant is one of the most stunning cinematic achievements in regards to its use of natural light. That's no easy task, especially in the locations used for this film, but Lebesky makes it work beautifully to result in haunting image after haunting image. The danger of the wild comes to life wonderfully through Lebesky's lens, and you really feel the visceral quality of the filmmaking seep through the screen. Number 4, The Tree of Life. visual poem like no other, The Tree of Life is where Terence Malick convinced Emmanuel Lebesky to revere the light in real time. There is always an element of spirituality to Malick's work, it's a theme that is blatantly explored in this film, but it's best expressed in the way Lebesky chases the light and creates portraits of a family in an endless struggle between life and death. 
The approach to imagery is not new to Malik, but the virtuoso camera work brings fixation on this subject to profound new heights. <laughs> Number three, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Hey, uh, since we're looking to rob banks, I was wondering if we could add another fella to the gang and sort of see if we couldn't come out of our next job alive. 2007 was an incredible year for Roger Deakins, with the gorgeously shot No Country for Old Men and what might be one of the finest showcases of cinematography of all time, the assassination of Jesse James. A remarkable feat of visual storytelling, Andrew Dominic's doleful westerns The Look of a Faded Photograph, blurred at the edges yet still vivid in its textual details, with the train robbery sequence by far the most visually arresting. Nonetheless, every frame of this film is spectacular, and was arguably much more worthy of the Oscar over There Will Be Blood. Number two, Blade Runner 2049. The film that finally won Roger Deakins the Oscar also happens to feature some of his best work. Blade Runner 2049 brings to life jaw-dropping futuristic environments using a mix of practical and CGI effects. It's the complexity of the cinematography that elevates Blade Runner 2049 to this top tier. That Deakins did all of this, mostly using practical lighting instead of digital effects, makes it all that more impressive. A long overdue Oscar that was richly deserved. Before we reveal our number one film, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. Pan's Labyrinth. There Will Be Blood, Mad Max Fury Road, Hero, The Fall, Skyfall, No Country for All Men. Number 1, Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition is a film of shadows, which is appropriate given the subject matter. Legendary cinematographer Conrad L. Hall showcases his masterful touch throughout what would be his final film, and indeed his posthumous Oscar was truly deserved. What Hall does with light in this film is miraculous, and he and director Sam Mendes find a wonderful way to tell this story through the eyes of a child through motivated camera movements and blocking. While the film is somewhat underrated, Hall's work here still stands tall 18 years later, with the most stunning use of rainfall ever portrayed on screen. Thank you for watching. Have your own opinions? Leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for new content every week.